Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, presentation about pu pushing OpenStack to the edge, uh, a duel between uh, RabbitMQ and uh, Cupid Dispatch Router. So who's going to win? Uh, stay tuned. So who's here? Uh, well, who am I? Uh, I'm just 28. I'm still figuring out. My name is uh, Alison Agi. I'm a research engineer at uh, Orange, France, in the beautiful region uh, of uh, Brittany. Uh, and uh, please, Javier. Hello, everybody. I'm Javier Rojas Valderrama. I'm working at INRIA Research Lab in, uh, in computer science in France, along with Matthew, that couldn't make it today. Uh, so what are we going to see today? Well, um, we are going to see what are the challenges of bringing OpenStack to the edge. Uh, we are going to show you how uh, deployments of RabbitMQ and Cupid Dispatch Router for OpenStack uh, uh, are made over the one. Um, uh, then we are going to show you our results uh, of uh, our performance evaluation uh, of both uh, message buses uh, in this context. And we will leave you with uh, some conclusions uh, from our work um, and uh, the next steps we need to see. So what's up with the edge? Well, uh, a telco usually has a big network. Uh, when you are in the core, you might see uh, big data centers where you have big resources. Um, but the more you go uh, outside the network uh, at the edges, um, the less smaller resources you have per site, but the more sites you have. Uh, so the problem of scalability comes very quickly. Uh, you also have the problem of locality, meaning that if you have two edge sites that want to communicate one with the other, well, you don't want them to go way up to the core uh, and uh, back to the edge. Uh, so these are the two main problems we are going to address in this presentation. Of course, there are uh, other problems, but we'll focus on the, these two. So for a telco like Orange, pushing open sack to the edge is a key. Why? Well, uh, a telco can always um, deploy OpenStack like any other uh, cloud provider in big data centers. It's, uh, uh, it works very well, but should it do just that? Well, we don't think so. Why? Uh, well, because it has the privilege of being, uh, a telco has the privilege of being the, mo the closest as possible to its uh, customers. Um, so it should leverage this privilege uh, and uh, uh, use its network to uh, deploy and deploy OpenStack uh, on the edge. But how do we deploy OpenStack uh, on the edge? Well, uh, first we can think of having per site um, a, the control plane and the compute nodes, uh, but uh, you will have too many control planes to manage. You will need to synchronize between them uh, and all that. It might, might be very costly. Uh, so the deployment we are considering in this presentation is where, when you have your control plane, your APIs, your front ends uh, centralized, and on the edge nodes you have your compute nodes, and only your compute nodes, we, who are uh, which are connected uh, remotely to your control plane, which is centralized. Um, so uh, we can take advantage of uh, OpenStack's native scalability. Um, all the processes, almost all the processes, are stateless. Um, we have. Uh, still the database and the message bus uh, to see uh, how do they respond to uh, distributed context. Uh, and we need to see how OpenStack uh, um, behaves overall over one. So the deployment we are considering here is where you have your um, control plane centralized. You have Keystone, you have the control parts of Nova and Neutron. And on the edge sites, you have your compute nodes, meaning the agent sides of uh, Nova and uh, Neutron. So uh, Nova Compute and the Neutron agent, whether it's uh, OpenV Switch, Linux Bridge, 007. And between uh, your compute nodes and uh, uh, your control sites, uh, you have uh, a wide area network connecting them. So what kind of traffic do we see between uh, the compute nodes and the control, uh, the control nodes? Well, you have RPC traffic. Uh, for example, Nova Compute sending information to Nova Conductor. Um, and you have uh, REST API calls, for example, from Nova to Glance or from uh, uh, Nova to Neutron. Uh, but we are going to focus in this presentation about um, the RPC traffic, which goes uh, through uh, the message bus. So what's up with the message bus? Well, it is one of the most critical components of OpenStack because it carries all the inter-process uh, communication. 
Um, so uh, if Nova wants to communicate with Nova Conductor, it goes to the message bus. If Nova Conductor wants to know where to schedule a VM, uh, it asks Nova Scheduler over the message bus, uh, etc. You have also Neutron Server, which communicates with uh, Neutron agents through the message bus. So these two message bus can be the same. But uh, theoretically, they are separate. Uh, they are decorrelated, uh, so they can be uh, two uh, separate bu buses. Uh, but what are the kinds of uh, messages we see? Well, we have RPCs, remote procedure calls. Uh, there are some kinds we see the call, which is uh, the RPC call, which is a request from a client to a server. Uh, so uh, basically, it's client saying to the server, uh, I want something, and their server responds, here you are. Um, you have also a, uh, uh, the RPC cast, uh, which is uh, the client just sending some uh, information to uh, the server, saying, uh, here, I, I have some news for you, and the server doesn't even say thank you. Um, and then the fan out is uh, where you have uh, the client, a client sending um, uh, a message, broadcasting message to uh, a bunch of servers. Um, so uh, it's uh, the client uh, saying uh, to everybody, hey, listen, but without being annoying. So, uh, of course, here, the client and the server can be, uh, uh, all the processes can play the client and the server part. So, for example, Nova Conductor can be client to Nova uh, Compute, for example, when sending a boot uh, request. Uh, and Nova Compute can be a client to Nova Conductor when sending information about the VMs uh, running on uh, the compute node. Uh, so more precisely, uh, the message bus is, first of all, also messaging, which is an uh, OpenStack library for uh, sending RPCs. Uh, and uh, there are multiple drivers under OSL messaging. Uh, the one um, most of uh, uh, OpenStack users know is RabbitMQ. It's uh, an implementation of MQP 0.9. So it's a broker. Uh, the client connects to the broker. Um, it sends a message, so the broker stores the message in a queue, so it stores the messages, it has a message retention. Uh, then the server comes and gets the, consumes the messages from uh, the broker, from the queues. There are other implementations uh, and drivers under OSO messaging, uh, but uh, the one we are considering here today is Cupid Dispatch Router. Uh, it's an implementation of MQP 1.0. Uh, MQP 1.0 is not a direct evolution of 0.9. It's uh, another protocol. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a routing protocol. It's a uh, Cupid Dispatch Router is, as its name suggests, it's a router. So we have a router topology. Uh, the client sends a message to uh, a router, and the uh, Cupid Dis Dispatch Router figures out which is the best way, the shortest way, uh, using a shortest path algorithm to uh, reach the server. And uh, it just gets the message from here and sends it there. There, are, there is no message retention, just buffers. It gets the message and it passes in there. That's what we call message passing. So, uh, why are we interested in Cupid, the Cupid Dispatch Router? Well, if we get back to our edge uh, topology, you have the cent a central site, you have regional sites, and uh, under that you have small edge sites. Uh, you might have your clients, uh, your processes, clients and servers uh, on these sites. Uh, when you are using uh, a broker, even if it's a cluster, it's basically one entity, one, uh, uh, one chunk of uh, software. Uh, so uh, you might have it in your central site. So if client three wants to communicate with server three uh, on the bottom left, um, they have to way, go way up to the central side to connect to the broker. Uh, so that is not very uh, effective. But if you are using Cupid Dispatch Router, which is a, uh, so a router topology, you might have a router instance on the, every one of your sites. Uh, so uh, if you want client three to if client three wants to communicate with server three, well, just has to stay in uh, edge site one. If uh, client one wants to communicate with server four on the bottom right, they don't have to go um, above regional site two. So it routes messages. Uh, so you see why we are interested in Cupid Dispatch Router in this context. Um, uh, we are not going to see in, uh, the, in our performance evaluation uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, deployment we are uh, focusing on, as we said uh, earlier, on centralized, uh, uh, a centralized topology control plane. Uh, 
but uh, it is very interesting in uh, uh, the edge context. So what are we going to see in this uh, presentation? What is the goal of this presentation? Well, to evaluate the performance of uh, um, RabbitMQ and Cupid Dispatch Router over one. So uh, does it resist uh, one uh, constraints and hazards? Uh, uh, for uh, example, um, packet loss, latency, and uh, network dropouts where you have the compute nodes disconnected from the control plane and unreachable messages pop out like crazy. Um, do you, does a router fit better decentralized, does it really fit better a decentralized environment in OpenStack? Uh, do the um, messages and the op OpenStack uh, still resilient uh, even if uh, the router doesn't retain messages? Uh, does, uh, isn't a broker maybe a safer option uh, because it retains messages? So we need to see um, all of that and also we need to know how overall RPC communications, whether it's um, RabbitMQ or QP Dispatch Router, behave over a one. Uh, so because what go, can go wrong in a one? So for example, you, can, you might have a RPC client disconnected from, uh, or uh, you, you might have loss between the RPC client and the broker or the router. So uh, the, Nova, uh, the Nova conductor message to boot a VM to Nova Compute is uh, lost in wilderness. Um, you might have a, a problem between uh, the broker and uh, the server. Uh, you, if you have uh, latency, so for example, for RPC calls, uh, it's a request and a response, so you get at least twice uh, uh, the latency. Um, if uh, you have an RPC cast, well, uh, Cupid Dispatch Router just gets the message and, uh, and sends it, so uh, it, it does well, but RabbitMQ waits for, kind of a, for a kind of an act, so you still have twice the latency. So all hell can break loose over a one. Um, but st um, let's uh, uh, get enough of uh, speculations and uh, let's see what uh, the experiments say. And I'll leave you with Javier Fredes. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. So right now I will present part of the results we, we described in the test plant of massively distributed RPCs that are uh, proposed to the OpenStack community and available to this link. We, uh, we're, we organize our test in uh, two categories, synthetic, where we only test the, the bus, RabbitMQ, or QDR, in the, and decentralized configuration, and uh, operational test with OpenStack in a centralized way, like uh, Ali described previously. For the operational uh, experiments, we, uh, we have two use cases, the network dropout and latency loss. So for all, all our tests, uh, we use a, a, a tool uh, with a homemade developed called Enos for easing the deployment of OpenStack uh, in virtualization of bare metal. That is a layer over Cola that eases the, the implementation, uh, the deployment of OpenStack. And to give you an idea, we can uh, deploy 400 computers in, in one hour uh, with this tool. All the experiments were performed on a grid 5000, a dedicated test bed for experimentation that is located in France. Um, in, in Vancouver this year, we presented uh, the, the results of the synthetic experiments. So we, uh, we worked with the, with, the, with the three patterns of RPC implementations that are uh, available on OpenStack, and we identified that brokers and routers are, scalabilities are similar, even though uh, we identified the routers are lightweight and achieves latency message, message delivery especially under high load. Also, we identified that routers offers locality of the message in decentralized deployments. However, to, to fully uh, uh, deploy the uh, OpenStack in decentralized way, we also have to work with the API and the database. If you want more details about this uh, presentation, please refer to the presentation on the website of OpenStack. To give you an idea of these results, uh, uh, here I will present a, a summary, a uh, uh, partial summary of the uh, synthetic uh, results, where we can observe uh, for the, some metrics for, uh, for three configurations, one bus, three, bu uh, three, uh, uh, three buses, or five, five buses, uh, with a high load of uh, messages for going from 1,000 clients to uh, 10,000 clients. We can observe that in terms of memory, for example, one broker uses at least 7,000 uh, megabytes of RAM compared to only 500 uh, 
megabytes in the case of router. In terms of cores used for, for use, uh, to use 1,000 messages, in the same way, CPU, uh, uh, the brokers use at least 24 co uh, cores compared to only one router. If we push this, uh, this experiment a little bit and we work with 10,000 uh, agents, we can observe that uh, in terms of, uh, of memory, the routers uh, consume 4,000 uh, uh, megabytes of RAM compared to only 5,000 uh, of, um, of the router. Uh, it means we have a ratio going from 9 to 17 between the use of, uh, of mem uh, memory between brokers and routers. And in terms of uh, cores used for this, this same uh, experiment, we have a ratio between uh, the broker and the router going from 8 to 27. A synthetic, uh, for a synthesis, we can see here a group of uh, box, box plots uh, of on, on this side from one, uh, one bus, Rabbit and Q, and, uh, and QP dispatch, where the latency is higher in all the cases. This is verified for the configurations of three rabbit queues or three routers or five rabbit queues and five routers. If you have more details about these experiments, please download the document that is linked in this, in this page. So let's go now to the operational experiments we performed uh, with OpenStack. With this configuration, we, we deploy in a, in a, on the core node three control nodes, one network node in, in the core side, and in the opposite uh, of the one, we have uh, the edge nodes going from in configuration of 100 nodes and 400 nodes. Um, we deployed Open, uh, OpenStack in, uh, in a virtualization mode on 20 physical nodes containing each one 32 cores and uh, 192 gigabytes of RAM. So for the ne network dropout, we use uh, AP, AP tables to, uh, to generate the drop dropout with a frequency going from five to 10 minutes and a duration of this dropout uh, uh, from 30, 60, and 120 seconds. Um, we perform 10, 10 benchmarks of, ra of, of rally with a fixed duration of 30 minutes. And after each uh, combination of, uh, of parameters, we redeploy it completely open stack. So the first thing we can observe here is that in general, open stack managed pretty well the, the dropout. We can see the, uh, the bars, uh, the clear bars uh, corresponding to the, to the dropouts. And on top, we can observe the results of RapidMQ and on down, down the the results of uh, QDR for the case of boot and delete servers. <laughs> However, we can identify three kinds of errors, mostly on, on, on this side for QDR. First, on top, on top of the, of the y, bar, uh, y axis uh, are errors uh, uh, related exclusively to, uh, to rally and the time after rally. It means uh, rally couldn't uh, identified the, the status of the virtual machine after the time out. Uh, the second category include that we can say more natural errors in case of dropouts. In case of dropouts, when we started an action of uh, boot and delete the server, uh, then the, uh, the communication is broken and uh, OpenStack identifies this error and uh, we cannot have a su successful benchmark. Finally, we have, especially, uh, especially in this case, um, some errors down uh, next to the uh, x-axis that are associated to the computes. Computes are not reachable because of the dropout, so they are not, uh, are not available for scheduling. If we are more aggressive with, the, with this, we observe the same results for uh, on a frequency of 300 seconds. In three, uh, and another inter interesting thing to, 
to show is that these, these results are very reproductive. In case of, uh, uh, again, the rabbit and cube works a little, uh, works better, apparently works better than Cupid Dispatch because of the retention of messages, because routers don't have this feature, uh, because they don't have this feature. Now, uh, concerning the latency and loss, we, we use three parameters. The latency, loss, and computes deployed on, on, the, on the infrastructure. So for latency is going, latency is going from five to uh, 200 seconds and loss going from no loss to 2%. And with two configurations of 100 and 400 computers. Again, redeploying OpenStack all the time after each combination of parameters. Um, there are two situations. The first situation where apparently uh, we can expect a result that we can interpret like is the case for the NOVA, for uh, benchmark of NOVA, for server boot and associate flow and IPs, where we can identify the, the, the direct impact of lost and, and latency for the duration of the benchmark. And this effect is equal for 100 computes or 400 computes. The differences with, uh, when we increase the latency and loss is associated to the complex uh, traffic of messages between the service of Nova and Neutron and eventually k -Stan. On the other side, we have a different, uh, different behavior for cases like, uh, of uh, Neutron benchmark, benchmark, like is the case of create and delete subnets. It's difficult to interpret this kind of results because uh, Rally cannot uh, provide all the information we require. Rally, the only thing uh, that evaluates is the response time between the, the neutron API uh, and, the, and the execution. But behind the scenes, there are a lot of things that are happening, especially in terms of traffic of messages. To give an idea, we have here uh, the timeline of a set of, uh, of benchmarks for multicast in a 400 compute configuration, where we can observe that the duration of the, of the, the, of the benchmark is different for each, uh, for each test. Uh, we, we observe uh, yellow bars for each test, and the number of messages in, in, traffic, in terms of traffic are also different. Easily, we can go up to 1,000 messages uh, um, for some cases like uh, the boot, ser a boot server and attached interface, but there are some extreme cases like create and delete port where we can observe more than 2,000 messages per second. The thing is, uh, uh, in the benchmark, during the benchmark, there are a lot of messages that are, uh, that are going from, from client, from the core and the, and the edge and uh, between all the services. In this case, for example, for the Anycast queries, we can observe that the conductor, the conductor for the case of Nova uh, is, uh, sends a lot of messages. And in case of the fanout queues uh, in the buses, we can observe that Neutron uses a lot of, any, uh, of fanouts. It means that uh, there are potential uh, reasons, actually there are reasonable reasons of doing that. One is we, don't, we want the, the update of the status of uh, some resources as quick as possible. And other, uh, another reason to, to send find outs to, er, uh, to everybody uh, is to avoid, to pollute the uh, request to the database to update the resources. However, this, uh, these uh, find outs are not, are not consumed for most of clients. So in these situations, we can reduce the traffic of messages in a, in, a, in a distributed deployment. For that, more experiments uh, are going on, and we will conclude the now. So <clears throat> uh, what do we conclude from this study? Well, that in front of uh, one latency and loss, um, 
QP Dispatch Router, which has uh, no message retention, still does as well as uh, RabbitMQ, which has a message retention. Um, of course, we've seen that uh, uh, in case of network, network dropouts, um, we have more errors because of the same, uh, uh, because of the same uh, setup, uh, because uh, of message retention. But overall, um, Cupid Dispatch Router consumes way less resources than RabbitMQ and still does basically the same job. Uh, so what are the next steps we need to see? Well, uh, we deployed QDR, QP Dispatch Router, uh, in centralized, uh, which is not uh, uh, using its uh, router capabilities. So uh, we, we would like to see uh, how it behaves when we really use it as a router uh, and deploy it in um, near compute nodes, for example, on edge sites. Uh, we would uh, also want to see uh, a bigger scale of computes, uh, so not the hundreds, but the thousands. Um, and uh, uh, finally, we, we, would, uh, th we think of uh, how OpenStack might be if we had more uh, components uh, which are distributed. So uh, we've seen that we can distribute, for example, the message bus, which is about database. It's uh, very interesting, too. Uh, if you, so if you have one message to take away from this uh, presentation is that uh, Cupid Dispatch Router is a real, really good alternative to uh, RabbitMQ. So uh, get it, try it on your deployments, and uh, let us know what you think about it. Um, this is it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, well, we are here to uh, at least listen to them. No questions? Uh, is there a dependency between the... Please, could you not, go? Yeah, sorry. Uh, is there a dependency between the size of router mesh, which you used, and the performance of the cluster? I mean, does it mean how, how many routers run? Oh, uh, we've run three, uh, three instances of... Uh, a Cupid Dispatch Router, uh, because we had also uh, three instances of uh, a RabbitMQ. Um, uh, so uh, it's kind of cluster, yeah. It's uh, clustered. Uh, to, uh, I don't know if just, uh, I responded to your question. Just to, to complete the answer, uh, during the synthetic uh, experiments, we see that the effect of uh, going beyond three, uh, three, uh, the, uh, a configuration of three buses, uh, the results are not very different. <laughs> And uh, it's a, a realistic uh, deployment uh, using three, only three. Uh, I would like to ask, um, did you have any problems with uh, Cupid integration in OpenStack services, since I think RabbitMQ is the preferred one and more supported one? And the second question is, uh, do you also recommend uh, Cupid Rota for more centralized deployments. Uh, so I am going to respond. Okay. So uh, yes, we had uh, we are using uh, Cola Ansible to deploy OpenStack. So uh, we rely on we relied on uh, uh, the container of Cupid Dispatch Router. There were some problems uh, uh, with it. So uh, uh, I think Mathieu addressed that. Uh, so maybe if uh, he can uh, answer better than me uh, the question about uh, uh, the problem facing uh, deploying Cupid. Uh, and the other question is uh, um, when you are uh, using, sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you use it in a more centralized way, would you still oh, recommend yes. it? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, we would recommend it just because of uh, the resource consumption. Um, because it does as well as RabbitMQ and it still consumes way less resources in terms of CPU and, uh, and uh, RAM. So uh, maybe you can yeah, explain what are... Uh, to, to give you an idea, uh, as the case of the synthetic, uh, synthetic experiments, we also verified the, the, that uh, the consumption of uh, RabbitMQ compared to, to Cupid Dispatch is, uh, is bigger. So it's a really good alternative to, to that if you have some constraints about consumption in terms of CPU and memory. And uh, for, the, for the deployment, was mostly associated to the, to the older version that is packaged uh, out of the box with, uh, with the containers. But once you, you, you update, you don't have any difference working with RapidMQ or Cupid. Thank you. Welcome. 
Sorry, another question. Uh, you know, with RabbitMQ, there are certain operational patterns you should uh, use when you, for example, restart RabbitMQs if you have, say, three RabbitMQs and there are mirrored queues, then you should not just randomly kill one of your RabbitMQ. You should restart them in order. So from an operational standpoint, uh, what do you think about Cupid routers? Are there certain uh, requirement uh, to restart and start and stop in Cupid routers? Um, you mean Is a certain orchestration required to operate Cupid? Oh. Um, specifically, I don't have uh, anything in mind um, right now. Um, so um, maybe uh, um, if I, uh, we can get uh, after this presentation and uh, maybe speak more in detail about this. Okay, thank you. No more questions? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you.